Good morning from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on a gorgeous Midwest morning. 60 degrees, a little chill in the air, but a beautiful blue sky day above, and the pit lane is packed for the first of two days of qualifying for the 107th running of the Indianapolis 500. We could not be more excited. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell and James Hinchcliffe. We've got the whole family here. Marty Snyder, Kevin Lee, Dave Burns, Dylan Welsh, and Steve Latart. And that is the first driver to qualify. Yes, number one out of pit lane on the first day of qualifying is none other than Captain America, Ryan hunter Ray in his dryer Ryan Ball Racing Chevrolet, ready to go. Or front bar adjustment, rather. You see his right hand going down again there. And I told him yesterday through our pit reporters that uh, we wanted to see white line usage, that he ought to try it, he ought to trust oh. it. And now oh. he's high, nowhere near it in turn one, and that's going to be a huge blow to his speed. Big lift, massive lift. He now just, Elio's in damage control. That lap three, he just got in too high into one and just could never get the front down. He's pushing Whoa. again and got into the wall. He is dealing with so much understeer right now. There's a little bit of a tailwind. Let's watch again, Elio Castro Neves. Keep in mind the speeds that these guys are doing, folks. Over 230 miles an hour. Whoa, and a kiss on the wall there with the right rear. Laying the tattoo on the paint. You can see it there. That's a, that's a pretty decent brush, no doubt. It takes a lot of courage to stay flat in turn three after having this moment. Big. 234. Boom. My goodness, the first we've seen in the 234 mile an hour range. Rossi is flying. He was very confident after practice. He said, I don't know why more guys didn't practice. The conditions are so different. Trust me, they're going to be shocked when they get out there, but we know what we've got. So even with the runs we've seen from other cars who seem to be struggling, only Colton Herta before Alexander Rossi in this lineup had practiced this morning. But let's see what lap two looks like. What's the downforce level? How much scrub do you start to get? Not too bad, 233.7. Yeah, I think we're expecting magic from these two, but we might be watching it happen right here in front of us, Lee. Here we go, watch this. You're gonna go straight to the top. No question about it. Alexander Rossi, what a qualifying run for the Californian. 233.5 miles an hour, clearly by almost a full mile an hour fastest. This is problem central. This is not fun for Graham Rahal, a veteran of 15 Indianapolis 500s. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is not nice. This think, is flat out scary. If this was practice, he would be in the pits already. He has to try to hang on and just put up a time because you just never know what happens with the rest of the runners. Yeah, I wonder if you're spot on there. Rahal, 20th and last, Hinch. Yeah, just trying to make up for the mechanical drag. All right, let's look at the time. 2.29.959 for his oh, first Oh, he's way out in turn one. <laughs> Completely off the throttle. That was a zero on the throttle trace. That is the last thing you want to, you don't even want a little lift. So it's pretty obvious to say that that was the slowest run of qualifying thus far. It is tough. Yep, it is. All right, get ready for Mr. Excitement. Here is the Deloitte Honda for Chip Ganassi Racing. It's the two-time Indy 500 winner, Takuma Sato, who put up a speed yesterday, T-Bell, that was the fastest we've seen in more than a quarter of a century. Yeah. It was exhilarating. As Hinch was saying, maybe maybe Rosenquist, maybe Dixon. Just It just underscores. Whoa! Whoa! Look out, he laid down a black line. Almost lost it at the exit of three but I didn't see any throttle blip, no. did you? I saw that foot firmly planted. Let's see what it cost him across the line. Makes one when you can, makes one. Dropped a little bit behind teammate Scott Dixon. When it's gonna go a little crazy here, look at that. Oh, <laughs> it, it looks so, I've said this 10 times already this month, it looks so subtle on the TV, just a quick correction, but at those speeds, when you're sat in the race car, that is an absolute catastrophic moment. It's gonna be close, isn't it? And he's on a Honda. He's in a Honda in a sea of Chevrolet-powered cars. Where does Alex Pelo slot in? P2 for Pelo. Really strong run. What do we have? 233.5. For Scott McLaughlin, that's pretty swift. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as close as you'd like it. There was 
definitely a little tiny, tiny bit of contact there. That was every inch of road. Mark, your tools here. Not as dramatic a drop off as his teammates, so more consistency. Solid run for the Verizon Chevrolet. One corner to go, and if you're Joseph Newgarden, Ed Carpenter, or Marcus Erickson, here we go. There's a new name in the top 12. Will Power is 11th. He bounces his teammate out. Man, it's just been some Penske on Penske bullying right now. It was Joseph that knocked out McLaughlin, and now Power knocked out Joseph. Where he's tracking right now, that puts him definitely in the top 30. Not safe safe, but in a much better place than he's been. He has had all kinds of drama in turn one today, both in practice runs and in earlier qualifying attempts as the fingers are crossed from the crew as this young British driver hopes to put himself in the show. Does he? Does he? You betcha! At the moment, he leaps from last to 27th. And while 27th may not sound exciting, it sure does to Callum Eilat. It is going to be razor thin margins to Ed Carpenter. And over the course of four laps, which is 10 miles, you're talking about inches. The difference between making it into the fast 12 or not. If he's in, he comes back tomorrow and has another go at it and could be a pole contender. So Tony close. Kanaan just misses out. Oh, look at the time. It's the exact same average speed. That's why Florin's saying, is he in or is he out? Because they need to go to the 10,000th of a second to see the difference. But to the thousandth, it's identical. Over 10 miles, four laps, 16 turns. And now it's showing Kanaan has jumped in. So maybe to the 10,000th. He's got it. He's got it. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, it's just one of those typical classic Indy qualifying days with lots of drama. We're hearing that it's actually maybe tied to the 10,000th of a second, but IndyCar timing and scoring goes past that. Normally, if there's we a tie. We are hearing. Go ahead. I say, normally, if there's a tie, it goes to the driver that's done it first. It yeah. is a perfect tie, we're told to the 10,000th of a second. I'm not aware of any time in Indy 500 history that that's happened. Well, look, the other thing that's impressing me so much about this run and everything we've seen out of Augustine Canapino is all of his movements are so calm and controlled when he's happy. Oh, oh! oh! there's that turn one. Oh, win, boy, Townsend. he's loose. He might wreck right here. The back of the, the, the rear toe link is way out of whack. He just hung on to it. That's as close as you can get without a massive accident. Uh, box, box, all right. Incredible save from Augusti. I said he kept his cool. He was just talking about how calm he was in the car even when he brushed the wall. He kept it together. Check this out. It has been an issue-free month for the whole field. There's been a couple of close shaves, and here's another one. That's too close for Canapino, though. This is going to rock a few. Rossi's playing Mario Kart on the bus right now. He's not even watching. <laughs> he's Indeed. just he's already focused Indeed. on tomorrow. But you know what? This could push Kyle Kirkwood out. Yeah. There's Lauren. She's Very smiling easily. already. I, I don't think she could. knows what's happening. Look at the crowd. They love Tony Kanaan. TK goes to P5. That put you P5. Good job. So close. One, two, three, four, five cars yeah. all. At Second lap, 2.34, nobody's done that today. Nobody's backed up with two 2.34s. Maybe Rossi's going, uh, uh, hey, uh, go get my fire suit for me just to be safe. Hey, it doesn't matter, man, with how long that line is. I don't think even if he you got in get, now, he'd have time to do it. You get 13 cars in in an hour. There's 16 in line, and that's assuming no one else goes into lane one, which they absolutely still will. If he keeps it in line here, the Swedish driver is going all the way to the top. He's got his teammate there to beat. Day one of qualifying, Rosenquist to three. the top with authority. Just shy of 234 Four, miles an hour. And you're trying to pull every single little trick you know out of the bag and nothing is working. I mean, it's a, it's a Sisyphean effort at this point. You're just, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying as hard as you want to work, but nothing is improving. Sorry, you're not three. making any progress and it's, it's just heart wrenching. It's. It's such a difficult position to be in. It's going to be a sleepless night over in the RIL oh, yeah. camp. And, and Graham basically admitted it before, and this one has been wiped Low off. Yellow flag, they're reporting the run. Yellow flag, box box. 
IndyCar says, no way, come on in. Let's move it along and let's give everybody, get, give somebody else. I mean, I know we know it, but like, that, that first lap is funny and it's only at 30.3. I mean, I don't know what else to do. All right, here we go. This is going to be one of the closing afternoon stories. David Malukas, little Dave, pushes his way in a big way. 23rd. Malukas is in to the joy of Dale Coyne Racing. And Catherine Leg is on the now bubble. on the bubble, and she looked relaxed and confident just 30 minutes ago. But this is not going the way that Christian Lingard wants it to go. This looks eerily familiar to Graham Rahal's last run as Catherine Legg. She's in. She knows she's in. Catherine Legg hugs the team on the Hendricks and Honda. Let's talk about positions 13 through 30. Remember, it's three abreast here at the Indianapolis 500. These guys are guaranteed in the field. All I see in these three rows, James, are higher expectations than where they sit right now. Can you imagine what the start of this race is going to be like? Think about row six. Connor thinks he should be at the front. Newgarden thinks he should be at the front. Ryan Hunter Ray is like, I've won this thing before. There are going to be some big, bold moves at the start of this 500. And a few surprises a little further back, like Simon Pagano, like Marco Andretti, even David Malukas, somebody who, like we said, qualified 13th here last year. But then as you go further back, some great stories. Augustine Canapino, Callum Eilat rebounding from where he is, the little team that could with R.C. Anderson and Catherine Legg on her return to the Indy 500, secure in the field. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.